The plant world is full of remarkable adaptations. There are more than 400,000 species. A small percentage of those have evolved a carnivorous adaptation. And what is more remarkable is that some of these plants are not closely related, meaning that carnivory in plants has evolved in multiple places and geologic times. There are 1,000 or so species of carnivorous plants. Carnivorous plants lure, capture, and kill their prey. The prey is then digested and nutrients are absorbed by the plants. To be considered a carnivorous plant, the plants must derive a significant amount of their nutrition from prey. Carnivorous plants are not performing magic since many non-carnivorous plants have similar adaptations. Carnivorous plants use attractive scents, colors, and nectar to entice their prey. Carnivorous plants do not use flowers as traps. Instead, their specialized leaves are the traps. While the traps of the Venus flytrap are snappy and well-known, there are others, and some don't even move. A pitfall trap used by pitcher plants and carnivorous bromeliads have leaves that form a fluid-filled well in which organisms fall into. Once inside, the slippery sides prevent them from escaping. For some, the liquid is mostly rainwater. For others, it is digestive enzymes that help break down the meal, which usually include small invertebrates. Nepenthes raja is one of the largest carnivorous plants in the world. At this size, they can eat a few small mammals a year. A variation of the theme of pitfall traps are lobster pot traps. These are found in Genlesia and in two North American pitcher plant species. Instead of gravity, these traps have an easy-to-find entrance and hard-to-find exit. Darlingtonia and Saracenia cytosina have an opening that is dark, while the rest of the trap has light coming in through white cells. The prey, which range from crawling and flying insects in Darlingtonia and aquatic species for waterlogged Saracenia cytosina, get disoriented by the windows and find themselves deeper into the maze. Genlesia plants are found in water or water-saturated soil. They primarily eat protozoans, which enter the trap by pushing past inward-pointing hairs. Once inside, they are trapped. Saracenia cytosina uses a similar concept, where hairs in the neck of the trap allow prey to move only towards the digestive enzymes. These carnivorous plants have sticky leaves that act as traps. Some species have glue-like mucus that traps the insects but does not digest them. Those plants rely on symbiotic insects. Many sticky leaf species do have digestive enzymes that help break down the meal. And while some wickedly wrap around their prey, ensuring more contact with the enzymes, others move their meals to the center of the leaf like a mosh pit or catapult to have the prey rest in a jungle of glandular hairs which digest the surfing insect. Others do not move their prey and absorb their meal wherever they landed. These plants tend to eat insects and other small arthropods. When grown indoors, they are known to devour fungus gnats and fruit flies. Utricularia have a suction trap. This group has species living as epiphytes in soggy soils or freely floating in bodies of water. Their bladders, which grow underwater or in the soil, have a trap door that swings open, vacuuming up the prey, which range from microscopic organisms to mosquito larvae. Digestive enzymes are then pumped into the bladder. Most carnivorous plants live in the nutrient-poor soils, where many non-carnivorous plants do not thrive. The reason why some plants are carnivorous is that those that happen to have mutations which enable them to acquire nutrients from prey through their leaves had an advantage over those that could not. These meat-eating plants reproduced and passed on their genes to their offspring. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. 
Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.